Call recorder. Okay, we are live on the Metabolic Motivation Show and super excited to have Holly Thompson with us. Uh, Holly, welcome. How are you today? I'm great. It's so fun to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Holly is a uh, certified holistic health coach uh, and uh, has a quite interesting background. You've got uh, uh, a number of certifications and you've worked and consulted with a lot of top professionals, uh, Dr. Mark Hyman and David Katz at Yale, I believe, and uh, um, wow, even uh, Dr. Chopra. So uh, you've got uh, quite a background. Holly, how, would you, uh, how did you get into, uh, into health coaching? Well, you know, I, I came to it organically, like a, like a lot of us do. Um, and when I had been, I had a career in fashion in New York City, I was a vice president for a company called Chanel. You may have heard of it. And, oh yeah, uh, my wife <laughs> loves it. <laughs> <laughs> and was in um, had basically had a had a career in you know luxury brand, um, you know buying, selling, merchandising. And I'd always been interested in had, and had a passion for health and nutrition that was sort of like a, a sideline hobby. Um, when I left Chanel, um, I actually got married and my, my husband and my new family was down in Virginia. And so after, after traveling back and forth and commuting for a couple of years, it was really kind of exhausting me. And so I decided to pursue something else and, you know, see what, what life would bring me. And in doing so, got, ended up getting really sick. And as one doctor said to me, you know, some people just aren't meant to leave that treadmill yes. <laughs> and go to a quieter existence. But I did. And um, what happened was when I was when we were trying to have a baby, I went through um, through a series of you know miscarriages, right. and then kind of a um, you know a a couple of years of one thing feeding another. So things like migraines, chronic sinus infections, allergic responses, um, you know, uh, miscarriages, so then hormonal imbalance, and then uh, kept getting sick all the time because all of this was basically weakening my immunity. And so it was this, um, you know, this compilation of of symptoms that I was I was dealing with symptom by symptom by symptom you know with a pill or a cream or a spray or or a week in bed or what have you and after several years of this I realized that you know my immunity was compromised my health was not what I wanted it to be what it should be what it could be and really um, after you know adopting our child really had to grab myself up and and figure this piece out. And having had, you know, having had the, this time where nutrition really was a passion of mine and sort of a hobby, I realized that I needed to turn to my food and really, you know, dig into what might be there. And had this feeling that that might be it, or that that at least might help what was going on. And it wasn't like it wasn't like I was eating, you know, processed food, junk crap food every day. It was, I was really, you know, I was probably eating the way a lot of clients that come to me eat, where yes. if you would ask me, I would say, oh, I'm a healthy eater, you know, right. but there, right? it's like every, almost everyone that I speak to or that I meet says, oh, I'm a healthy eater. But there was something in my diet and some things in my diet and some things in many people's diets that actually, even in a very small amount, day after day, create a low level inflammation that I believe was at the root was the root cause for this whole web of things that were happening to me. Wow. So, yeah. 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 That's so fascinating. I was just been talking to, uh, so many people about this. It's, it sort of occurred to, uh, to me that it's almost rare to find people who are not dealing with inflammation. What do you, yeah, what do you what's your take on that? Yeah. I, I think that is, that's so true. And, if you look at the foods that create inflammation, um, you know they are they're foods that our country or modern modern society, let's say, has run away with in you know in terms of what they offer they offer to the public. So in restaurants and grocery stores, etc. So foods foods like you know dairy, dairy soy, gluten, um, sugar are foods that are not normally and generally, you know, should be part of our maybe everyday, all day existence. But if you look at any menu, like take oh, a wow. take, 
It's so Take, easy to get all of those. It's so easy to get all of those. And, you know, if you're, if you have children, like, my gosh, when I was raising my son, I mean, my husband and I would look at the quote unquote kids menus in restaurants and everything was sugar or dairy or gluten. I mean, it was just a combination of those three things. So, you know, mac and cheese with a little sugar added to it was, you know, that's what most kids are living on basically. And those are foods that, you know, nature never intended them to be every meal all day long. Sure. It's it's not natural for you know for that to be the case. So and, and for processed foods to be part as much a part of our diet as they are, all of which create inflammation. Yeah, that's so that's so fascinating. Uh, what uh, Holly? Speaking of challenges uh, along with inflammation, what other typical uh, challenges do you see people you know your customers your clients uh, facing? Well, you know, one of the things was, you know, the point that I made about looking for the small things. So if, so what I often hear from people is, oh, I don't, I don't eat dairy. And then when we dig into their food or, you know, when they talk about their daily diet, there's actually a little bit of dairy every single day. And if, if dairy is an issue for you, if inflammation is an issue for you, even just, um, you know, just a little bit of dairy a day, like let's say the cream you put in your coffee can be problematic. Same thing with gluten. Gluten. Some people have more, um, more severe responses to trace gluten than they do to gluten itself. So, so really, you know, I think it's so important to know what, how foods affect you, you know, how, and do that little bit of work to figure out, do I have an issue with this? Does this food group create inflammation? And if so, you know, it's empowering. You can make a decision to not have it in your diet and you consciously make a decision, you know, when to splurge and when to have your birthday cake or when to have your ice cream or, you know, um, but to take control of it and not just, you know, a wing and a prayer, like, oh, okay, I know I'm intolerant to dairy, but having this a little bit every day is not going to do anything. Um, right, it's so most of the case, it's not, it's not the case in many cases. Right, okay, that's a great point. So, so what you're saying, if I, if I got it right, is, uh, is even, depending on the sensitivity, even a little bit can have a big negative effect. Is that right? Absolutely. And I think, I think people don't get that. I think people think it's a teeny bit, it's a teeny bit. Often, even if you, even if you total up what that teeny bit is, like if you, if it is cream in your coffee, you know, what I, what I've asked people to do is actually pour yourself a cup of cream or milk and, you know, the amount that you think you might be using for that morning coffee. And often when they're finished, it's way more than a cup. And people can't believe it. Like in their minds, they think, oh, it's like an eighth of a cup and it's nothing. And really, it's a cup and a half or two cups that they're, you know, pouring in their coffee throughout the day. So I think that, you know, that's one thing that I see. The other thing that people that I see is that people um, tend to have an all or nothing attitude. Oh, towards right. It. You know, you're, you're in or you're out. And, uh, and so it's this... I'm on or I'm off my diet or my healthy eating, and I'm going to be really good or I'm going to, or I'm bad today. Right. And that kind of thinking, it, it doesn't work. You know, if you're, if you have something that you know disagrees with you or that you know is, you know, like a processed food or something that you know is not great, let it go. I mean, we all, you know, we all do it. We all should do it. I mean, if it's something that you really love and, and you want to have a treat occasionally, if it happens, so what, you know, you just move on and get back to your normal way of eating. But a lot of people, you know, that's sort of their, their way to just let go and go crazy and, um, you know, and start continue down that road. And then the other thing that I see, which I'm seeing a lot of it lately, um, maybe because of the time of year where people are really kind of jumping into different health programs. And that is this, um, this way of, you know, jumping into diet trends or healthy trends. So yes. there are, you know, every year or every, you know, every so often there's a new diet trend that's hot that, you know, you want to try. And, and my book gets into a lot of that because my pre the premise of my book is that we're all individuals. We, you know, it's bio-individuality and that, yeah, sure, you know, try a trend, like pursue something that sounds fun, but know that 
it might work for that person who's touting that trend. It might work for your best friend, but it may not work for you. And you've really got to, you know, do the work, test it out and see if it does work for you. What I often see is that people will try one thing. So they'll start on one way of eating, let's say, and then segue to another way of eating. And before you know it, they're sort of eating everything yes. and can about what they're doing and confused about, well, well, wait, I was on paleo, but is this paleo? Well, this is carbs. Well, carbs are good. Well, you know, I'm just going to do car, you know, and they're kind of like, and then they get really frustrated and they give up because they're trying to follow these, you know, rigid ways of eating and living that are impossible to do. So that's, uh, that's a great <laughs> point. You know, it brings to mind something. I, I was doing a talk, uh, last uh i guess last week or week before last and, and this someone asked we were talking about this uh, the idea of mixing and matching diets and right. uh and it just popped in my head you know sometimes a lot of people not only are they mixing and matching but they're taking the worst of yes. <laughs> of these different approaches and money, making this mat this mixture or whatever this mashup and uh so i, I have this Incredible. It's so common. Like, and I, um, I actually have never talked about it before. Like I'm, this is the first time that I've talked, you know, in the media about it. Like, I don't even think I've written about it. I really should go write a blog about it now or we both should. Hey, I'm because... working on it already now. Good, good, good. <laughs> we can team up. <laughs> good. I'm so glad because it, it is prevalent. Like I, I even, um, I'm even work. I even work with people individually, and you know, for one-on-one -on -one sessions. And so we'll, and then we'll, you know, they'll hire me for a few months to be, the, you know, sure. to be their coach. And, and I'll even, I will even have people who begin working with me, and I'll say, okay, these are your goals. They're really simple. They're really, you know, and this is the approach, and this is what works. And I know it works because I've been doing it for years, and people who do it, you know, it works. But I have over eager clients here and there who will be doing what I ask them to do. And then they'll read something and they'll be like, oh, I'm going to do that too. And so I'm going to go, or I'm going to try that, or I'm going to go buy that too, because I must need that too. When, right. you know, meanwhile, they're, they're working with me on a supervised methodology that's, that is proven that I'm tailoring to their physiology, to their body, to their lifestyle. Yes. And they're still gra grabbing like this for what their best friend told them about at the gym. Oh, and, yes. and yes. you know, so it is, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's a, it's a great thing to bring up because it's something for, for your listeners, for our listeners to be aware of, you oh, know, yeah, by all means, by all means, it's, it's, you know, I've, I had the same experience with, and I'm sure just about everybody does, you know, when we're in, um, you know, dealing with other problems that people will hear, you know, okay, I will, I'm very, a big proponent exercise wise of a very minimalistic approach. And so doing uh, walking uh, every day and then doing some interval training and then some, and then a little bit of weight training. And uh, so I have the same thing. I have people who will then they'll start doing, uh, they'll start doing CrossFit four times a week. You know, and CrossFit is extremely intense. Uh, you know, I can do CrossFit once a week, maybe twice a week if I'm sleeping, you know, eight or nine hours a night. But uh, so what happens is they inevitably get injured and, uh, and then it all goes to hell. <laughs> right, right. And they, they didn't do what you advised them at the, as the professional with, you know, that's that's really funny. You so know, it's, we all, it's, it's know, an interesting. Holly, it's, the, it's the combination of the more is better, you know, part uh, right. cognitive bias, and then it's also the uh, the more, it's it's also that all or nothing. You know, it's yes. combining those, and then more is better, and then you just then you either break your body or you break or you burn out, and uh, so right. yeah, I think it's so important to tell. I I now tell people. I do this little thing. I give people a little a paper, and it says, uh, "I will only do, do what my coach says during that's, this lit, this three week period, just for that." That's anyway, great. That's <laughs> it's, a great it's idea. Hard, it doesn't help. It doesn't always work. But anyway, let's go back. Let's talk that. about your book because it's it's uh, it looks really interesting. You talk. Um, tell us the the yeah. That's a be beautiful cover picture. I love that. That, uh, that shot there. Thanks. So Thanks. how would you summarize your book for us? 
So it, it's a seasonal approach to a healthy, holistic lifestyle. That's what I would say. Um, a happy, healthy, you know, more beautiful you. It is, it's geared somewhat towards women, but I have a lot of guys who love the book, who have bought multiple copies. So, um, you know, it is appealing to both men and women. Uh, we, I start with some basics, the basics I call the dangerous liaisons. And those are some of the, some of the things that I mentioned earlier, foods that are, are problematic in most people. So we list, I list those, go into those sugar, dairy, gluten, soy, um, processed foods, and then some foods that we should avoid at all costs, like in my, like genetically modified foods, um, overly processed foods, pesticides, and um, and so on. So it's a good, it's a good bottom line guidebook to, to, you know, as an overview of what we do know from science about nutrition. And we all know nutrition is a new, a new science in a new field. So this is a distilled down version. And then what I do is I go into how to how to figure out the foods that work for you and give you a method. Um, it's, I call it a cleanse, but it's not a starvation. It's not a juice diet. It's very much based on whole foods and, and ways to figure out through your food, which is really proven to be the best way to do it. Um, not through blood testing, you know, foods that are problematic for you and then the foods that you want to add in. And then from there, I t talk a little bit about healing and take a seasonal approach for each of the four seasons into your holistic health with um, with your food, with um, with beauty, with some some natural skin care, some uh, natural ways to have a clean home, live a healthy life and give some DIY recipes. And then at the end, I have um, a nice assortment of seasonal whole, you know, wonderful recipes with some fantastic guest submissions by um, people you mentioned, Dr. Mark Hyman, uh, Do um, Natalia Rose, um, Puree Juice Bar in DC, who else, Do oh, Dr. Alejandro Junger, who wrote the Clean series, gave us a recipe. And so people like that who have, and other, other well-known experts who loved the book, gave me some recipes, we share those, um, and they also reviewed the book um, which I'm excited and happy to say. So yeah, so it's it's a great. I mean, I think it's. I'm really proud of it. I'm thrilled with it. Um, I'm getting great reactions to it. So yeah, wow. I heard from Google yesterday. They love it. Um, I'm speaking at Google next week in a few oh, days. That's fantastic! Congratulations <laughs> on 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 that work. I, I just saw. Yeah, I looked at some of the uh, some of the press you're getting. That is uh, so. Hats off to you and. Uh, you know, um, I have not uh, have not read the book. I have uh, looked at some of the some of the reviews, and it looks fascinating. That's on my list, and so I hope to do a write up in the future. Not that you need any more press, but uh, of course I do. We need to share. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it looks great. So you talk about nutritional styles also, and and um, and so could you summarize that maybe for us? Yeah, so so what I found after years of working with people in groups and one on one is that I I started to see different eating styles or nutritional styles I call them emerge. One is like what I call the healthy omnivore, which is a goal style if you do eat animal protein. Um, so that can include what is you know commonly popularly known as paleo. Um, I, I the second one is a flexible vegetarian, basically. Basically, a, veg a classic vegetarian diet where there might be a focus on lentils or beans or and grains, um, and then the third is what I call a modern vegan, which is often someone who's who loves a vegan lifestyle might occasionally, you know, they're vegan until they're not a vegan, or they might be a full vegan. Um, and basically, what I've done is give bound soft boundaries around each of those so that it's not. You know, what? I, it's not a hardcore set of rules where you're part of a club or you're not part of a club. And that, right. that's another thing that, you know, was really, I think, imposing, imposing rigidity and negativity on, on people's lifestyles and on people's nutrition choices and food choices were these strict boundaries. So, for example, I work with a lot of women in New York. Yes. Um, I think, I, you know, I lived in New York for a long time. I totally get that, you know, kind of energy. And 
a lot of my New York women would say, oh, I'm a vegan. I'm a vegan. And I'm like, okay, great. So let's talk about your food. And when we went into their food, they were not a vegan, which, and, and no, there's no judgment, vegan or not vegan. I love the, you know, the vegan lifestyle. I admire some, anyone who devotes themselves to it. Sure. But for many, many women, and especially these women that I was speaking to, they were not living a vegan lifestyle. They were not eating in a vegan, they were primarily vegan until they had a little piece of salmon or until they had goat cheese on their salad and, or, you know, never thought about honey. And so I, I named these three nutritional styles to put some forgiveness around sure. those eating styles and to say, Hey, like ditch, you know, ditch the labels. Let's find an eating style, your nutritional style. That's right for you. That suits you. And, you know, let together, let's discover what works and what doesn't, you know, yeah, I so, love that. I think that's so, I think it's so valuable. Uh, you know, sometimes it occurs to me that, that, um, it's almost like some people we, we fall into, we make the, the nutritional style, our religion. And it's almost like, you know, if you're not, you know, if you're not this or you're not that, and this could be any camp, you know, not to judge anybody because I have, you know, like you probably, I have, you know, I have customers who are, uh, who are omnivores, I have customers who are vegan, I have customers who are, you know, sort of very heavy, vegetarian, you know, heavy vegeta vegetable, uh, and eat meat once in a while, I mean, all kinds of, you know, whatever, but finding out what works, so your thesis and your experience is finding out what works for you is the most important. Is that right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And one of the, one of the quotes in my books, one of the chapter titles is it's food, not religion. Oh, I um, love it. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, it is. And if you, you know, if you look at your food and your diet as, you know, as something rigid and, um, you know, it won't work. It doesn't work and it creates stress. And you know what? The stress it creates is a whole lot worse for you than that tiny piece of goat cheese that you had at your salad at the French right. bistro. Today, right. So it's, um, yeah. And hope so hopefully that resonates. I, I think that that thinking resonates with a lot of people right now. Um, people who, you know, who want, the bottom line on, you know, well, what are the facts? And then, and then let me figure this, you know, give me, empower me to figure this out for myself and we, with my body and learn to tune into my body and, and make decisions based on, on me rather than my best friend, my neighbor, my sister, my mother, right. whatever, you know? Yeah. That's uh that's, there's a joke here in Spain that they talk about uh, when, when you ask a well, maybe we, in fact, let me let me take a step back. Maybe we can we can shift gears a little bit and talk about fertility. That's an issue that I'm seeing a lot uh, a lot nowadays. A lot of people who want to uh, you know who want to uh, to get pregnant and, and have and create and start the family and they're having difficulty. They're starting later here in Spain and as just like in Italy, the average age of uh, uh, and I think in the states as well. It's getting people are waiting longer and longer and longer. Uh, mm -hmm. So anyway, the joke here though is they say, "What does your doctor recommend for for you know women who want to get pregnant?" They say, "Well, whatever his wife recommends." Exactly. You know, it's a, my cheese yeah. joke, but but yeah. um, anyway, um, what's what is your? Uh, I know you did, you probably had some experience with fertility yourself. You're a happy mother now. Um, what could, is there any anything you, any tips you could give uh, for women as well as for men because we're part of the. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I um, I w there are several nutritional style babies out there that I am proud to say, um, you know, moms who were older who came to me. I I actually worked simultaneously with two moms who both had health issues that were preventing them. They thought would prevent them from ever becoming a mother, and it was amazing. I, I you don't I used I don't use that word often, but they both ended up having babies with, you know, by the time we were, I was finished with one, she got pregnant, she was pregnant. And I finished, when I finished with the other client within three months, she was pregnant. Wow. Three this months. Is, I am now, I am not a fertility doctor and I am not sure. a fertility specialist by any means. What, what I believe is inflammation was, was at root 
um, was creating problems for for these women. And I think once we, they worked very hard to clean up their diet, to remove inflammatory foods, to eat more healthy foods. And, you know, we're holistic beings. I mean, when, you know, everything is related and it's not like there's one magic pill or one magic food that that you should eat that's going to make you fertile or that's going to help you keep a baby or, you know, maintain that whatever, pop that egg out or, you know, increase your, your sperm motility. But I, I believe that the less inflammation that we have going on in our body, the less toxins we throw down there, the less, you know, the less junk food that we are eating, the less the less work we're making our bodies do uh, and and the more time and the more energy because we are we are finite resources we are not un, we, our bodies are not unlimited energy so those to, our body uses those resources to build healthy new cells to cool inflammation you know to to do all the positive work that needs to be done if you're not throwing all the junk down there, you know, and if you are, then your body has to fight inflammation. It's got to detoxify all that, those, you know, food additives that it doesn't recognize. It has to, you know, it stores them in your organs and then it becomes problematic for your organs or, you know, they travel around in your bloodstream. And it's, um, it, it is, I think, um, I think the key to our ultimate health is this inflammation piece that we started with and that, that eating a healthy diet that suits you, that, is, um, that creates ease in your digestion, um, most importantly, is, is the secret to ultimate health and, and, and body functions and fertility is a body function. Oh, that's fantastic. Well said. Yeah, there's so much... I think many people have no idea that uh, our hormones are, are highly affected by our by our food and it, and our okay. lifestyles as well. And so, uh, you know, that's uh, that's a major a major thing. Uh, uh, wow, this is great stuff, Holly. Um, the let me see if, if there's if, if I can talk, just look at uh, looking at the notes Rachel left me. Uh, she keeps me so organized. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> Uh, okay, now you also you also talk about health and uh, you know being and beauty as well, and uh, and you've got beautiful skin by the way. Um, you know that's uh, my my wife. Uh, my wife will be very uh, very curious about your 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 tips on, and I'm sure many of our females as well as male listeners and would be curious for your tips on beauty and health if you could share anything with us. Yeah, you know, I, I, I again, like I think the the healthier the food, the healthier your digestive tract, um, the more efficient your body is working. Excuse me, one second. Okay. I'm just gonna unplug unplug this phone. There we are. I'm sorry. Let's, That's okay. No one worries. Little, one thing I forgot. Rachel had noticed, had mentioned. Please unplug the phone. Uh, so I'm sorry. Let's go back to that again, if we could. But that's Rachel, <laughs> he is helping. Oh, no, I'm kidding. Um, yeah. So I, I think that your skin, you know, your skin is a mirror to what's going on inside. So if you're, if you are have acne, um, if you have acne, if you have skin issues, if you have very dry skin, if you have rashes, and any kind of, you know, a lot of this is inflammation or, or you know, a signal that. Something inside is off, um, you know, because things, so our skin is our largest organ. It's the way that it's our main way of detox, detoxing things. And so if your skin is showing as um, problematic, then I think it's time to take a look at, the, at your food, at your nutrition and, and what's, going, what's going in and what you can do about it. Um, I feel that the healthier the digestion the better your skin is going to look. Um, I think that a lot of, I see a lot of people, I meet a lot of women in particular who have very dry skin at an early age and they're almost, um, and I think I'm interested to see what you think about this. I see a lot of women who overtrain, who yes. are very thin, who um, are who thin and muscled, but who have very dry skin and look very dry and their faces look therefore look older than their chronological age. Yes. Um, and, and I think it's because they're overtraining and creating too much inflammation with the, the overtraining and probably not eating enough healthy fats to support that lifestyle. 
um, or, and pro maybe drinking enough water. But for me, I think it's, I'm focused more on um, healthy fats and the activity level that I often see. So um, I do think, you know, the way you live your life is reflected in your skin. Um, you know, if you are, I love what you said about your approach to, to fitness, you know, that I like, you know, it's very similar to my own, you know, get out there and walk, get out there and move. Yes, you do need some weight bearing exercise to, you know, to, to, to keep your, your muscles strong, to help build healthy bones and, you know, for toning, etc. We do need flexibility, but you know, there is such a thing as overtraining. There is such a thing as doing too much exercise. And I think some people don't know that. They don't yes. get that. Once again, so, more, the more is better thing is so, is so ingrained in, in American psychology or Western psychology. And, and then there's yeah. also a lot of money, you know, that's made by selling more of whatever, you know. And so... So a lot of, uh, yeah, I think it's, and I, and I think what you were just saying about, uh, you're, you were noticing your female clients who were overtrained and also presenting, you know, a lot of dry, dry skin. Uh, I do see, yeah, definitely see that. I, I would probably have, um, you know, I deal with probably 60% males. Um, and, uh, but I do see that with females and, uh, there is more of a tendency for the females to restrict to restrict their calories and their fats, especially too much. Which is, if we're not getting enough uh, enough healthy fat, our, we're definitely going to notice that in our skin. Right, is, is my right. experience. Yeah, and if you are if you are an athlete and you're, doing, you're into some serious training, really have to pay attention to those healthy fats. Um, I think those are you know they're very important for your skin. So, and I also think water, you know, prop, being properly hydrated reflects in your skin. Um, getting your phytonutrients. You know, they did a study in, um, in Scotland at St. Andrews, and they actually, they worked with students, and they fed them, they took a photo of them before, and then they put them on a diet of high levels of, of um, vegetables and fruits, yes. and in particular those that were high in phytonutrients and beta carotenes, etc. and then they photographed them at the end, and they actually proved that if the more vegetables you ate, the prettier you were, the more, the better looking you were. Your it, it increased skin tone. It create it increased, um, enhanced the color of your skin. No matter what what color you know skin you had, it enhanced the color to your skin and enhanced your skin tone. So that's that you know glow that everybody talks about. I loved that because you don't see too many you know, too many official studies or people, you know, pu people publishing studies about, you know, about eating your fruits and vegetables. And we all say, eat your vegetables, eat your vegetables. But it actually does give you better skin. Yeah. Wow. Uh, that is a fact. I, I will have to find that study. And yeah, is totally. that something you've written about on your blog? I have um, maybe about a year ago or so. It was, the study was done, as I said, at St. Andrews. And it was a few years ago. Yeah. It was a few years ago, and it was with a you know, as I said, group of college students or group of students there. And um, but it was interesting. They showed before and after photos. Wow, uh, that's fantastic. So, do, so, um, uh, so it showed a direct relationship between the amount of that, a higher vegetable consumption and better and better skin. More, so, and it, they related it actually to attractiveness. Yeah, yeah. That, hey, you know that could be the tagline: vegetables are sexy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> another blog for you. Another yeah. Blog. Wow. Well, well, Holly, I, I'm just yeah. looking at our time. I know we could go on. This is this is wonderful. Um, but we're kind of. I don't want to. I want to respect your time, and I know we but we are getting. So we should probably wrap up here pretty soon. Um, let me uh, let me ask you just to sort of wrap up. If um, we talked about a lot of different things here today, we talked about your wonderful book. We talked about inflammation. We talked about uh, nutritional typing uh, and uh, and other things. What if, if if people were to ask you if there's one other one or two other powerful tips that you could uh, you know as as some say a small small hinges that swing big doors. Is there anything else you'd like to, you could share with us from your toolbox? Um, you know the big the big one for me is. Uh, is to try to relax around it, around this whole idea of nutrition. Um, 
you know, the the problems that I see or people who tend to have, who tend to have, to battle their weight or battle their health through their food um, are the ones who who do who get obsessed with it and who jump from diet to diet to diet to diet and almost and as you said over overdo it. Yes. So my best advice would be to chill about this nutrition piece, you know, to to chill out about it, to kind of take a long term approach and don't don't get into your food as a way to, you know, to lose weight and, you know, by spring, get in, you know, get into your food and nutrition as a way to live longer, be healthier and have a fabulous life because your food, you know, it's, it's so much bigger than just how, you know, just how your, you know, your weight or the number on the scale. I mean, I, you know, as someone who's, who's, who turned to their food for healing it completely transformed my life. You know, I don't, I mean, knock on wood, I don't get sick anymore. I don't get migraines. I don't have sinus. I don't have the fibromyalgia I had. I, you know, I'm not getting every virus and cold and flu that comes, comes along. In fact, I, I, you know, rarely, rarely ever get sick. And I cannot tell you the last time I had a cold and I have not had a sinus infection since I began this journey. Wow. Hey, and uh, so that and that kind of living is what re what's really going to affect you in the long run. It's going to affect everything and allow you to if weight is your issue for example, allow you to release the weight. Yes. Because if your body's holding on to weight and you're fighting all these cold, you know, your body's not going to want to release the weight. So it's um you know, it's a very much a holistic approach that I advocate and um and a, and a personal a personal one, a personal journey, and the, you know the message is that we are all different. You know, I'm a huge believer in biodiversity, and until you figure out your nutritional style, um, you haven't really done the work. You know, to live to live your best life. Wow, fascinating, fascinating message. I love that. Uh, you know, biodiversity and nutritional styles, and so, and for anyone out there to get more information. Holly's got a wonderful book, wonderful website. Uh, Holly, what's the best place to find you? Go to hollythompson.com. It's H-O-L-L-I and then T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N. hollythompson.com and you'll see a link to grab my book on Amazon. It's on Amazon. It's on Barnes and Nobles. You can buy the, also buy the Kindle version. And um, yeah, love to. I do. I am accepting one-on-one -on -one clients. I'm really busy right now, but it's you know, something that, that definitely works. Um, and sign up for, to get my, uh, my weekly note, which is always chock full of great information, the latest, latest and greatest in nutrition and recipes and fun things to do and hear and learn and listen to. So yeah, love to, love to hear from your, your, um, listeners. And thank you so much for having oh, me. I love to meet you. Thank you, Holly. It's been a pleasure. I that uh, thank you for, for making time for us on the show. And um, this, is, uh, this is actually the first show in our new office. So uh, oh. right now, in fact, the sun, I just realized the sun is killing me now, but uh, I'm getting my <laughs> vitamin D. So <laughs> good. There you go. There you go. Well, good. That's great. Yeah, we will be. So we will be in touch. And once again, people, you can find Holly, hollythompson.com. Uh, this will be going up first on YouTube. We're going to be launching on iTunes uh, as uh, in the near future, so it will get a, it'll be launched, a re, you know, launched again on iTunes as well. Fantastic! Let well, let us know, we and will. we'd love to. We'll share you and love meeting meeting you, you know, kindred spirit. So yes, thanks. by all means, by all means, stay in touch, and if if we could ever do anything to help you, please let us know. But, uh, yes, likewise. Like, likewise. Great, thank you again, Holly. Take care. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye.